Hi, my name is Becca. I'm in the ceramics studio with Ed Parrish, who's here for bronze casting in the ceramic studio. I think I already said that. We're in the ceramic studio. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I touched them. And I am the ceramics assistant. So I'm gonna ask you a few questions. Go but for, for to start, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to the arts? Oh, uh, I grew up in North Carolina and didn't really know much about art as a thing as a kid, um, but was always like making stuff and drawing and and then I think tenth grade I got to take like a full on like year long art class at school and then I kind of gave up on a lot of other things and was like okay this is a thing to do uh, I'm gonna do it I didn't have any idea what that meant at the time but mm -hmm. uh, I stuck with it so here we are so how did you use a bronze casting if you started with just general arts um, I studied uh, art in college and <laughs> We had a pretty good foundry program there at East Carolina University. Um, I studied with Carl Bellingsley and Hannah Gibran. So I learned foundry there. Um, for my personal casting stuff, I more took to iron casting, which is a bit more of an involved casting process um, as far as the furnace operations go. But I do bronze and aluminum too. And People like to learn about bronze a bit more than it's the fancy art metal, you know. Yeah. So. so you specifically learned it through college. You didn't go I to started, any school. I started learning it in college and then learned it over life, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I no, I never studied at a craft school. Well. But I'm you? learning stuff teaching this workshop. Yeah. You know. Did you, did you always think that you were going to teach art? Or that you were going to become a professional mm -hmm. working artist? Um, yeah, somehow, you know, as in the beginning, what that means and looks like, because I don't think people really get it, or, but, you know, you have to do a lot of different stuff along the way, unless, you know, unless you're extremely lucky or, Whatever, you know. Right. I've done lots of different work, so. Yeah. That's pretty good. So how did you find Touchstone? Um, when I first moved to Pittsburgh, um, I met some people in a small metals group mm -hmm. and came up here for like a weekend workshop retreat kind of thing when we were doing some enameling work yeah. here. Yeah. Nice. So that's how I first came here. Um, and then my friend Glenn Gardner teaches up here a bit and has been involved with stuff here over the years. And then a few years ago, through working with Rivers of Steel, reconnected with here and started doing some casting out here. Yeah, it's sweet. Do you, do you think you like craft schools more than college education? I mean, there's a value in both. I think the thing you get at a craft school is just the focus on the work and you, you don't have so much of the college life going on and the uh, like all your other classes. So it seems very focused to come to a place like this and uh, more personal in a way. And it's also just a great escape. This obviously is like such a beautiful campus. Um, so it's nice just to be away. Phone doesn't work that good here. So you eliminate a lot of the distractions of your everyday life yeah. coming out here. So like more concentrated to your craft. Yeah. yeah. I feel like in a college setting, you have more distractions. No one's gonna have... grade you on your work here, which is cool. Yeah, so, yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah. Do you have any do you have any advice for aspiring artists? Or do you have any suggestions thinking back on how you've gotten to where you are now? Have another way to make money. Mm -hmm. 
you know, maybe learn a trade, don't quit your day job too early, um, and, you know, be prepared for a lot of work and a lot of learning and a lot of, like, perceived failures that could be one of your better learning experiences in the long run. Yeah. So you didn't always work with bronze casting as you are now? I very rarely work with bronze casting. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I rarely use bronze in my own work. My own work is primarily cast iron, but with some aluminum currently. But I mean, I've worked with a wide variety of materials and worked um, with more like installation type work for a long time. Um, and then small scale, large scale stuff, but you know, I've done lots of things for work. I worked in metal shops doing more like ornamental iron work and furniture and blacksmithing work and yes. fabrication stuff. I ran my own metal shop for years with a business partner. Um, I you know, taught classes in my own studio. I, worked in the film business for years doing specialty props and special effects work. Yeah. Um, wow, that's super cool. But now I work full-time at Rivers of Steel as the metal arts coordinator, so I oh, cool. keep all that stuff going and we're building the program out now. Nice. Do you have any achievement that you're still working towards accomplishing? Um, It's always just to keep, I mean, I'm always working to keep progressing my work mm -hmm. um, and trying to experiment and find new things and new approaches. Um, but as far as like a big goal, achievement, like lasting effect, I'm working with Rivers of Steel to set up a metal arts center there. Um, currently we're focused on foundry work, but we're looking to expand to offer blacksmithing and fabrication and be like more of an all-encompassing metal arts center. Yeah. So if we can pull that off, it'd be a pretty big achievement, I guess. It's very well-rounded. It's not so focused. Or, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Could be cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there any specific thing that pushed you towards your career or helped you move forward in your, in your art work? It's just work. It's a lot of work, you know? I guess whatever silly drive to keep going or for whatever reason. Um, it's as much about making stuff and it, it's art therapy for me too, you know, it's like if I'm not working or making work, I kind of get a little stir crazy, so I don't know what to do with myself. So. Yeah. yeah, the constant making and Constant to a point, you know, you got to remember to take breaks and mm -hmm. do all the other fun life stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that you tell your younger self? Is there anything that you would tell your younger self? What to do differently? What to tell your younger self? Maybe try harder. <laughs> <laughs> try harder, but take breaks. But take breaks, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's hard to know as a kid, you know, you never know. Oh. Uh, one one turn changes everything, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there's so many, like, pathways that you can take and still lead you where you need to go. Yeah. Yeah. And it's about the adventure, not the destination necessarily, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Take time to enjoy it. 